Hey y'all, so um, I'm kind of overdue for a more serious video. Um, so I kind of shared a lot of information, a lot of details about different things that God led me to do last year as a result of the word that I had. That word was expansion. I learned that I needed to expand my view of God. God needed an, an expansion in my life. And one of the areas that I had made God small or one of the effects, uh, outcomes of me making God small was I have been dealing with a lot of fear in a lot of areas. Like I know flat out God told me to do some things and fear of, you know, fear of what people would say or fear of like the impacts of me making certain decisions, fear of letting certain things go, closing a chapter on certain things, they have been like weighing on me. And it kind of came to a head for me yesterday in my therapy session. So I was just talking about a lot of different ways that fear has impacted me. And I already knew that this was fear, but I didn't realize like it was manifesting in so many different areas. And the biggest thing I took away from my therapy session yesterday, and also my therapist is amazing. If you're a believer and you're looking for a therapist who is who can apply faith-based um, modalities in addition to um, traditional therapy modalities in your process, I highly recommend her. Her name is Christina Austin. Anyway, um. I can't remember exactly what she said, but it's just like I had an epiphany go off of how I've been allowing the traumas that I've experienced to keep me in a place of fear. And in so many words, what she said was, you've been making the right decisions and you've been on the right path. Just keep looking forward on your path instead of looking back to your trauma. And that's the thing that trauma can do to us. It can cause us to continue to look back, look back on what happened to us, look back on the decisions we've made, the choices we made. And um, honestly, those things can somewhat operate as negative motivation. And I say negative motivation in the sense that we allow these things to fuel us to try to move in the right direction instead of addressing the trauma, addressing the hurt, the frustration, the pain, whatever feeling or emotion, um, the impacts of that trauma in your life. So that way you can leave it there and move forward. And I realized that I've left some parts of what I've experienced in the past, but I have not fully let go of those things. And it's greatly influenced a lot of decisions I've made, especially since I had my son. And I feel that I'm supposed to share that one, if you're dealing with fear and you know that you've experienced some sort of trauma in your life, one, take a break, take a stop, take a step back and observe yourself. Like I can look back at myself and how fear influenced so many decisions I made. And granted, I how I feel about fear now is different than my early belief about fear as a believer, the perspective I had of it as a believer. Um, I have a different view of it now. Fear can do two things. One, it can definitely keep you from everything that God has for you. It can keep you stuck. It can keep you um, afraid to try, afraid to fail, afraid to do anything. But fear can also um be used to help you go to God. It can be a motivation to push you to God to make right decisions and choices so that way you can um be informed and be educated on the choices and things that you're making. So in a lot of ways when I had my son and when he was, you know, still very young, a lot of my decisions were made from the right place. But as he's gotten older and 
you know, as I've let this thing continue to loom in the back of my mind, I began to make a lot of decisions out of fear. Like, if I do this thing, what is the impact going to be to him? Is it going to keep me from being active and present in his life? Or if I stay in this organization or if I continue to do this thing, what is the impact that it's going to have on, on him? And a promise I made to myself when I had my son was that I was never going to allow him to ever feel like he stopped me from pursuing any dream that I, I had. So I feel so convicted about this because there are so many things, some dreams that I had to put on the shelf, um, that I was forced to put on the shelf. And that time of me confessing the serenity prayer for 21 days and really just coming to terms with like, there are so many things that happen out of my control. I genuinely have to, I know now I have to go back and grieve those things. I have to go back and grieve everything that I didn't get because of the things that happened out of my control, everything I couldn't finish, everything I couldn't start, you know? And so, um, I have to grieve those things and I have to really, um, especially as I finish this fast, I have to get in God's presence and ask God, is this something I'm supposed to pick up? And if it's not something I'm supposed to pick up to receive the peace, to let it go so that God can give me another dream. So my challenge to you <coughs> is to confront your trauma and genuinely ask yourself, is the thing that I experience keeping me from something God has for me? Is it keeping me stuck? Am I afraid to move forward because of the traumas I've experienced? And if you are, grieve everything that you've lost, everything you couldn't do, everything you didn't get to finish, everything you had to quit because of the trauma. And then make the decision to move forward. Ask God, what things are you supposed to pick up? What things are you supposed to let go? Ask God to help you to be able to just fully let go of those things. So that way you can make room for everything he wants to give you. That was a beautiful thing that came out of this fast so far for me because I realized I just really have to pray and ask God, what am I supposed to show for now? What things is he calling me to let go of? And how can I um, create space or make room? <laughs> how can I create space or make room? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So one thing God told me in like November or December of 2021 was to make room. He told me to let go of some things. So that I can make room. I thought it was making room for me to be able to do other things he wanted me to do. And the truth was God was telling me to let go and make room so that I had more room for him. And I see it and I feel it now because I allowed fear to occupy a space in my life that it wasn't supposed to. I've allowed fear to keep me from so many things that I wanted to do. Like case in point. I have long desired to go on a solo trip somewhere. The only solo trip I've ever taken was um, I had like won this trip to a timeshare um, and I went on a prayer trip to Florida. I eventually was able to go see one of my friends, uh, one of my prayer partner friends. And it was such a beautiful experience because I had that time to myself with God. But all last year, I wanted to take a trip somewhere by myself but I allow the good intentions of other people that were laced with fear to keep me from going. And I see it now. Oh, God. Um, yeah. I let it keep me from doing so much stuff. And so <laughs> don't let fear keep you from everything that God has for, has for you. Every plan that God has for you. I also pray right now that both you and me will be free from fear and wouldn't allow it to keep us from anything. Like, there's so much that God has for us <laughs> that if we allow ourselves to get stuck or become sad or to dwell on or stay stuck in the trauma, stay stuck in the past, we will never get to all the beautiful things that God has for us. And I want everything that God has for me. 
I want all of these things that I wrote down um, as a challenge that God has for me. So <sighs> I needed that. I needed to share this. And all that to say, don't let fear keep you stuck. Address your trauma. Go to therapy. If you can't afford therapy, you can't find a therapist. Start by journaling. God did a lot of my healing. He started a lot of my healing process outside of outside of therapy. Um, when my dad passed, I was seeing a therapist and I got to a point where I would come back so empty that God used. Um, she was like a spiritual mom at my work mom. He used her to tell me you need to stop. But he had already told me I needed to stop going. So during that time, so that was from 2010, 20, yeah, the end of 2010 until 20, 2020 for 10 years, I didn't go to therapy. And during that time, I spent a lot of time praying, a lot of time fasting, a lot of time praying and fasting, um, uh, doing intercessory prayer for other people. And in the midst of that, God healed me. So for the people who can't afford therapy or can't find a good therapist, just start by journaling. Start by talking to God, going on a prayer walk and getting those things out of your head so that way you make room for God to give you the answer and the solution that you're looking for. Yeah, God gave me a word in the midst of this. I love God. But anyway, I hope y'all have a great night. I hope you have a great week. And I'm really looking forward to these next six days of my fast so that I can get whatever God has for me because I know something like something life-changing is coming for me in a good way. Like I feel so much optimism and I have so much hope for all the things that God has in store. And it's not just financial or monetary. It's more so like there are some like ground shaking things that God is going to do in my life. And I'm really excited for it. And I'm excited for it for you too. Take the time, address your trauma, grieve the things that you didn't get, get that stuff out. So you make room for more of God and um give god the space to give you another dream and to put another dream in your heart to take something off the shelf and for you to get back into it and trust that whatever god has the grace for uh in your life it will happen if it's a lot of things god can can do so much with with a yes and that's what I need to do right now. Say yes to God and what he wants to do in my life. So that's all I have. Talk to you later. Bye.